Entrepreneur on Fire, Episode 9. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Hey, Fire Nation, and thanks for joining me for another episode of Entrepreneur on Fire, the place for inspiring interviews with today's most successful entrepreneurs. Are you on our email list? If not, you are missing your chance at the $50 cash we give to one lucky subscriber every Wednesday. Would your Wednesday be a little better with 50 bucks in your pocket? Go to entrepreneuronfire.com or eofire.com if you're like me and can't spell entrepreneur to find out more. Question, have you been searching for an elite mastermind group? If yes, look no further than Ignite an amazing mastermind of aspiring entrepreneurs. We have weekly webinars, amazing resources, forums, and huge giveaways, including a $200 cash giveaway every week. Come join our community at ignitemastermind.com. If you enjoy this free podcast, please show your love and support by heading over to eofire.com and clicking the subscribe and iTunes button at the top of our page. This will shoot you over to iTunes where you can leave a rating and review. To show my appreciation for your hopefully five-star rating and review, I will give you a shout out at the top of an upcoming show telling the world just how cool you are. And now prepare to ignite. Okay, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Dane Maxwell. Dane, are you prepared to ignite? Oh, baby. At 22, Dane started out of his parents' toy closets, building an internet website for real estate companies. Five years later, Zany.com works with hundreds of real estate companies, helping them with real estate recruiting websites, real estate internet websites, and real estate transaction management systems. Dane, I've given a little overview about what you've done. Why don't you give us a little more intel about who you are and what you do? You know, uh, this will probably be my 10th interview in the last week or two. And it's just been quite, I've been quite blessed to be able to share this message. Uh, and, you know, I think you might get the most articulate version since I've been so practiced by now. That's exciting. What I, one of the things I think is really important is not that I started with intranet and not that I built recruiting websites and not that I own a real estate transaction management software company, sounds like a, a mouthful, is that I built all those companies from nothing. Uh, I built all those companies without any idea of what I wanted to build initially. I got the ideas straight from my customer. I built those products without any, uh, without any money, and I built those products without knowing how to write any software. Um, so the products themselves are remarkable. Um, they're remarkable because they're built specifically on what the customer said they wanted. Not, I didn't have to inject my opinion anywhere in the process. Um, what, what, makes the, what makes my business remarkable, in my opinion, is the process that I use to create companies from thin air, if you will. And that has been what's kind of sparked the uh, popularity of the process that we now teach at the foundation and, of course, all the interviews that I'm doing because people are really eating up this process because really it's, it's, a, it's a process that focuses on uh, the unlimited potential of being human um, by reversing all of the common limiting beliefs that people have around business, like business is risky, business takes a lot of time, I have to pick family or business, or I have to pick one thing to be successful at. You know, you hear a lot of people that aren't successful saying, well, at least my family is good. Well, no, you've just really settled on an abundant life because you can have everything you want. You just have a limiting belief that's holding you back. So what's really exciting to people about this is that they can live from an empowered belief framework that says you don't need an idea. You don't need to know how to write software, and you don't necessarily need money to, to build a lucrative software company, which happens to be the most lucrative business on the planet. Wow. Well, I am excited to delve more into this. Now, we're going to transition to the first topic, which is a success quote, because at Entrepreneur on Fire, we always like to start the show off with a little success quote. It's kind of our way of getting the motivational ball rolling, so to speak. So, Dane, what do you have for us? The, uh, the, the more I study copywriting, the more abundant my life becomes in every area. All right. And can we attribute that to, to you, to anybody else? 
but I just made it up. And there's probably maybe a few different ways you could say it since you're, you know, copywriting is an iterative process. But really the, 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 the main principle I want people to take away is that if you're, um, if you want an abundant life, study copywriting. That's incredible. And I'm glad you made that up on the spot. It speaks volumes about where your head's at. And how would you say that you actually apply that to your everyday life? This is, um, this is much more, well, copywriting is the process of putting words and, and phrases into a sequence that gets people to, to take action. Um, that action can be whether they give you their email address on their website. It can be if they give you money. It can be if you, depending on what your family wants to do at night, it could be them getting them to go to your favorite movie when they don't want to go. Um, it can, it, it, it's, how, it's how I hire the best developers on the planet. Um, copywriting is, is not about sneaky sleek persuasion that manipulates people. Um, copywriting is about figuring out what's important to that person, figuring out what objections they have, and then removing those objections, disarming those objections so that they can get what they want and you can get what you want at the same time. So when I, for example, when um, I, I have, we have software companies and they're all incredibly well run by uh, amazing people and I hire them with great copywriting. Um, you find out what's important to a developer. Well, what's important to a developer is um, getting paid on time, having clear expectations, um, knowing that their product is going to impact the world, knowing that their code is actually going to get in the hands of customers so they can iterate based on customers instead of being stuck in an endless cycle of development and never getting released. And, and, and also, um, you know, actually those are the three big things is b being paid on time, having clear uh, direction. And, and knowing that their work is going to be impacting people. Now, if you take those principles and you look at Odesk or Rent-A-Coder or Elance or any place people hire developers, you won't find any of that language in anywhere of the titles for their projects. All the titles of the projects are all very me-focused. It's the, it's the people that are trying to build software. They're like, I want this, this, and this. And none of that has anything to do with what's important to the developer, thus and hence why they probably have trouble hiring remarkable talent. Mm, that is such a great point. And we're going to use that to transition to our next topic. At Entrepreneur on Fire, we really focus on the journey of the entrepreneur. And you're our spotlighted entrepreneur right now. So we're going to start with your journey and really delve into sometime in the past, you've had a failure, you've overcome a challenge, you've overcome an obstacle. Lead us through the steps of this failure up to the point that it happens. Well, John, first I want to uh, commend you on what you're doing with Entrepreneur on Fire. Uh, I think it's it's a very well very well needed thing. Is is we need as many people that are producing quality content about entrepreneurship as possible. So I just want to thank you for doing what you're doing. Well, thank you, Dane. Um, the the failure that comes to mind is uh, the big one. There, I mean, there are lots of failures. Um, you know, in fact, before I get into the story, I had an intern come come visit me. Uh, he saw my interview on Mixergy. And he wrote me and said, hey, Dane, I loved your interview on Mixergy. I want to be around you. Would you please let me live with you for the summer? I'll be your intern. I'll work for free. I'll do whatever you want. Um, and and uh, I said, oh, uh, I gave him a few test things to see how serious he was, like a test project to see how he would perform on it. Got him done pretty decently well. So, okay, come on down. Um, three months goes by. You know, He starts a few different ventures, something in the e-commerce world, something in the pest control world, um, all under my guidance. And um, none of them worked out. And they didn't work out not because of my guidance. They worked out because they didn't work out because he had severe limiting beliefs that were handicapping him from actually being successful. And this is what we actually find uh, with people that are failing is it's not that they la lack the know-how. It, it's that there's actually a subconscious limiting belief buried deep inside them that's actually preventing them from going after what they really want. Um, anyway, at the end of the summer, he uh, says, you know, I dropped him off. I dropped him off at the airport for him to leave. And he, he looked over at me and he said, Dane, I, I feel like I've been a failure this summer. I feel like I haven't accomplished anything. And zooming back even from that standpoint, we created a very open relationship. It sounds like we're dating, but that's not the case. Um, we created like a very openly, emotionally communicative relationship where we talk about our insecurity. We talk about our fears. You know, I think he actually helped talk me through ending an engagement at the time. And so he helped actually even move the furniture out. Like, so we, we bonded on a very deep level. And so, um, this is how I actually, how, how deep and transparent I like to be with everyone so they can show up with their raw emotions as they are, which I think is so important. Otherwise I don't think he would have ever told me this. I think he would have just got out of the car. 
Um, and he said, you know, Dane, I feel like I've been a failure. And I said, you know, uh, you didn't come here to succeed, Chris. You came here to fail faster. Um, and, and uh, you know, that gave him some hope. And, you know, fast forward a year later, he's now got his first few paying customers on his, fir- on his first business. And um, so it's really not about entrepreneurship. At, at, the, at the foundation, we, don't, we believe that success comes from, uh, I think, like progress and, or uh, what is it? Success comes from failure, basically. Like, we, we believe we fail so we can succeed. You know, success comes from progress, progress from experience, experience from failure. We fail so we can succeed. So um, I failed more times than anybody I can count in my social circle. Um, it's just that successful people aren't any smarter. They just fail more. Um, and then the, the ones that don't fail, they, they stick. And now I'm fortunate that I don't actually fail much, if ever, anymore because we've kind of perfected this, this fairly proven process where you can predict the success of a company before you ever start building a product. What sparked all that was me losing $12,000 um, buying a website for sale um, that I totally got scammed on. I bought it on like buysellwebsite.com and I bought that bad boy and it was bad to me and I signed a contract to guarantee earnings, verified earnings, everything was legit and then like 20 days in, Google AdSense emailed me and said I have so much fraudulent activity, they're shutting down my account more or less and I wrote the guy and he said, no, you've been clicking on your own ads so this is your fault. Of course I wasn't. So we tried to sue back and forth with an attorney and it went back and forth letters that I said, I, he said I was clicking on my ads. I said I wasn't. Google wouldn't tell, Google wouldn't give us IPs of who was clicking on ads. So, you know, I just, I just completely dropped it and it was that point, that point when I said, I'm going to stop trying to buy my freedom. I'm going to start looking internally and build my skill set so that I can actually create companies from nothing. And I had, a, I had about $123 in my bank account at that time. Um, and I remember logging into Wells Fargo to look at it and it was just terrible. And, uh, you know, now that was the best $12,000 I ever spent because it was in that $123 that I had that I was able to launch my first six figure product uh, from absolutely nothing. God, those were two extremely powerful stories. Thank you for sharing that. And we're going to, again, use that to, to transition to the next topic, which is right on the heels of this. And that, that's an aha moment. Because as entrepreneurs, every day we have little aha moments that propel us forward. They, they keep us going. They inspire us. Right now, I've heard so many aha moments that you've had up, in, up to this point in this interview. And I really would just love for you to focus on one aha moment, one huge light bulb that came on that you said, Wow, this is going to be big. I'm excited. Let's do this. What, who's your audience typically? My audience are people that are currently in corporate America that are driving to work every day, listening to this podcast every day, looking to be inspired, looking to break away from that life and into entrepreneurism. Okay, badass. I have an aha that aligns with them very well. So before I get into the aha, I remember sitting at a Remax convention because I sell to a lot of real estate companies. Well, I don't anymore. That whole company, I, have, I hired a CEO. He runs the whole thing. I've stepped away from the software company completely to focus on teaching now. Um, but when I was running the company, I was sitting across the table from this Remax broker. Big, big deal. This guy's a big damn deal. He's one of the top 100 in the, comp- in the country. And he's like, so Dane, I want to set up your agent care center product. That's agentcarecenter.com, one of my software products. Does about five, six grand a month. Has for the last few years. I don't touch it. Um, it's the smallest business I have. And I, he asked me, so Dane, tell me about your product. And I said, well, tell me what you need to know before you sign up. And he said, well, actually, no, I don't need to know anything. I've already looked at it all. I said, great. We'll sort out the details when you get back home. And that was it. And so I remember we were at a table full of eight other brokers and all the other broker owners were like, oh, great. The tech guy is going to go into his spiel about how amazing his product is. And since I understood that, you know, copywriting is the removing the barriers to get someone interested and, and having them buy, I said, well, what's important to you? Um, and he said, you know, I don't, actually don't need to know anything. And so that sale was made in a matter of 30 seconds. Uh, I tell that story because it's linked to the question I asked you, who is your audience? Because it's linked to my biggest aha, which is that you, if you are focused on breaking out of your job, and you're trying to think of ideas to break out of your job, it's probably stressful, it's probably uncertain, and it's probably frustrating. And the reason it's those three things, and it's probably more, you probably even list off uh, more, John, but the reason it's those 
is because it's focused on the person. It's the person in corporate America that's focusing on getting out. Well, they're, they're the person that got themselves in that situation in the first place. And you cannot solve a problem with the same mindset that you came in at. You know, Albert Einstein said that. Interestingly enough, no one can actually find and attribute where Albert Einstein actually said that. I think someone just put his name to it one day and we all think he said it now. <laughs> um, but you can't solve a problem at, at the current level that you created it in. So if you got into a job with the mindset that you have, you have got to change your mindset to get out of the job. And that's why it's important that you listen to courses like this to reverse your mindset. So let me give you the aha, so you have that reverse mindset. Stop focusing on you. Stop. Fo- and do I still have you, John? Absolutely, Dan. So stop focusing on you. Stop focusing on what you want to do. Stop focusing on your passions or what your skills are. Take all of that away and just focus on what the pain in a market is. If you just pick a market like veterinarians or bird shops or um, karate studios or I picked real estate companies, and you just go into a market and you ask them two questions. This will open up an entire world of opportunity to you. You ask them, what's the most important activity in your business? They'll answer. And you'll say, are you sure? You know, is there anything that's more important? They say, no, this is my most important activity. And you say, okay, great. Do you have any pain associated with that activity? They're going to say yes. If they don't say yes, there's something wrong. It's not the most important activity in their business because usually the most important activity has pain. Um, and then start digging into that and you find out that they have severe pain around this very important activity in their business. And you start defining that pain clearly. You write it down and you're like, all right, so I understand your pain is X, Y, Z. And you write it down and then your subconscious is going to come up with a solution to that painful problem. You don't even have to worry about coming up with the idea. So instead of being like idea focused, what's my idea? What can I do? Become focused on finding the pain. And you will get out of your job much faster than you realize. In fact, you might get out of your job so quickly, it's going to scare you. Wow, I love that. That is just so clear. You've just described it so well. It's really got me excited. And I'm going to ask you this question. Have you had an I've made it moment? You're, there's, there's a series of them. Um, you know, I, I, I've, I thought I had the I've made it moment when... I made my like first two thousand dollar day. Um, now, like, make like a couple grand a day every day, and I don't even wor- have to work on that. Um, you know, uh, then I thought I had my aha moment when I had a forty thousand dollar day. Um, you know, then I then I was like, you know what, the money's actually not important. Uh, then I thought I had the aha moment when I had you know all these people writing in and thanking me for changing their lives. Um, so the aha moment, or no, is that what you said? The I made it moment. Yes. Um, yeah, the first I've made it moment was when I was making like four grand a month and my, my expenses were like $2,000 when I was building my first six figure software product, the recruiting ninja system. Um, and I was on my own and I was like, holy shit, this is actually going to work. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that insight. And we're going to transition right now into what you have going on today. And I've, I've really been following you for a little while now and really just gets me excited to what you're going to answer to this next question because I know what you're doing. I've been tracking it. I've watched the videos. I've received the emails. It's inspiring. Let's continue off of that and just kind of break into what is something that's really exciting you right now about what you're doing? Oh, man. How to put it in, how to put it in words like helping people realize their full potential um, and, and providing the support structure and the community and the framework around actually making that a reality. Um, what happens is people get stuck. Like, the, the, like I have a number of friends that I met. Basically, okay, being an entrepreneur is the loneliest thing on the planet. It is so lonely at the top. Like it's, you have very few people to relate to because not a lot of people want to be at the top. Right. Um, you know, interestingly enough, the most crowded part of the pyramid is all the people that choose to be mediocre and average. The second you choose to be excellent and go to the top, it's really not that competitive because it's not a very crowded space. And it's a much better place to live. Sure, it demands more of you, but at the end of the day, you just feel better because, you know, you're, being, you're doing what you were built to be. Um, 
and it's the best mom on the planet, then be the excellent mom. I'm not saying in, in terms of being an entrepreneur in business. Um, but I've had a number of friends that were working nine to five that are now completely free of that cage and they're working anywhere on the planet. And my passion really is uh, this, this whole getting started community, this whole business opportunity, this whole work at home thing, this whole have freedom thing. It's a very jaded uh, shady place uh, that I think needs to be reinvented, and you know we also take entrepreneurs that are stuck. We, we in a, in a in a simple sentence, we teach people how to build a six figure software company in six months with they have no ideas, no money, and no development experience. If you start working at the with the foundation, if you if you have to apply and if you're accepted, at the end of six months, you will have a, so, a software product with at least ten paying customers, even if you don't have any idea, any money, or you don't know how to code. Um, that's like the end result that we provide people, but it goes so much deeper than that because this is kind of a step on your journey because what will happen is software will give you, if you're going to build your skill set in business as an entrepreneur, which is super important. Um, and, and, and then as you build that skill as an entrepreneur, um, it's going to uh, ignite these other areas of your life that you, that, that you didn't know about um, so that when your software company gives you freedom, you're actually free to explore what your real passions are without the financial burden of having to make money with them. Um, so, the, the in promise is very, very enticing. It's a, it's a lucrative software business that you can own even if, you have, if you're pretty clueless. Um, as long as you have desire to bring to the table, it can happen. Um, but it really goes much deeper because we're really working with people to reverse limiting beliefs to empowering beliefs, helping them reshape their mindset so they can get out of the situation that they got themselves stuck into. And that is uh, our new focus. And uh, my goal is to create at least 20 new entrepreneurs and 20 new software companies in the next year. And um, that, that's what I'm working on now. That is a worthy venture, a worthy cause. Let's explain a little more to the listeners exactly what this would be. And let's do that by saying, John Dumas, myself, I go, I apply, I get accepted to the foundation. What happens? Take me through the process. So it's a six-month program. And, and the first month, one of the things we find is that we find that people, they think they need an idea to join the foundation. Like, the first month is all about Finding an idea. And we do that by focusing on three key words. Find the pain. We, will, we have a whole process around idea extraction where we go into different markets and we idea extract. When you do this process, it's not going to be an issue for if you can find profitable ideas or not. Your stress will not become, I need an idea. Your stress will become, how do you pick from the three lucrative ideas that stand in front of you? So that's what happens in month one. Um, you're going to get stuck in that process. You're going to have limiting beliefs that come up. You're going to be talking on the phone to business owners that, that you're going to have to learn these new skills. You'll have uh, other people in the community going through this stressful process as well. But the stress creates growth and you grow into a different person. Every time you take action, it rewires your brain a little bit. And so um, when you reframe, when you rewire your brain, you don't just read books and listen to interviews. You take action and it actually creates new circuit, circuitry in your brain. So you'll actually be with other people that have all the same fears as you, all kind of pushing forward as a group. You know, there's a couple hundred people all at one time doing this. It's very intoxicating to be around this kind of infectious energy. Um, so you get stuck in that process and you'll have my personal attention. I work personally with everyone. And we reverse those beliefs so you can move forward. That's month one. Month two, you start to pick the most lucrative idea that can be built in the least amount of time. And we have a whole five-part green light, red light, or green light, yellow light, red light framework that if you get a green light in all five areas, then your gangbuster is good to go on that. And the, some of the green lights are like the scope of the project better be less than 12 weeks, Revenue potential, you know, whatever you want to make for revenue potential. If it's five grand, that means that you need then a hundred people at fifty bucks a month. Is that possible with this product? There are, you know, there's other green lights um, that are important as well, but uh, those aren't important to get into now. The the first, so that second month, picking the lucrative, most lucrative idea, you're going to get stuck there as well. You might want to pick the idea that you think is coolest, but your customers actually tell you there's a bigger pain in another area. So we're very careful about. Um, this, you know, what we find entrepreneurship is really nothing more than helping people get out of their world, out of their own way. Um, the, the way that you succeed in entrepreneurship is that you just don't get in your own way. Like if you ask the average business, like, Hey, do you track all your important numbers? The eight out of 10 businesses are going to be like, Nope. And then the two out of 10 that say yes are the ones that actually just dominate their industry because they track the numbers and the entrepreneur doesn't even track the numbers. He hired someone in to be the number tracker for them. 
It's not about doing stuff you don't enjoy. That's not what I'm saying. Um, month three is not all about selling that idea in advance. We have this whole process where people will pay you, where we've perfected that people will pay you for your product before it ever exists and they'll be excited to do it. Um, and then if you, if you can sell people on your product and they give you money before it exists, it's totally legit, totally left, totally ethical, totally legal. Colleges do this. Uh, um, Threads does this with their t-shirts. You know, call If you go to Harvard sites, you'll see that people can enroll in this course and they got to pay two grand for the course, but they don't get to see it for like a month. So they're paying in advance. And then Harvard says, if we don't have at least 75 students, we're not going to run the course. So it's like they refund your money. Um, Harvard does like, you know, really smart people do this and it works very, very well. So we talk about how to sell in advance. And if we find people in the foundation, um, building products or writing code before they have any paying customers, we kick them out. In fact, we kick people out from month one if they aren't following directions. This is a very high performance group. You don't join unless you want to be, unless you're taking action. Otherwise you will be kicked out. So you're just surrounded by all these people, no matter how scared you are, as long as you're taking action, that's okay. It's okay. To, it's okay to be afraid as long as you're in a supportive community that you're not alone, and as long as you're taking action, that's okay. Um, but a month three, we'll kick you out if you don't have any paying customers yet. Um, month and then the last three months are all about um, building the building the marketing engine that's building the leads that are that are going to buy your product when it exists. You know, we talk about lead generation, list building, how to build the lead capture page. Um, and then how to drive traffic to that. And then, you know, how to talk to your list as you're building the software. So they fall in love with your personality and the product, um, even more. Uh, and then month six, you know, hopefully, hopefully on month six, you know, your developer hasn't gotten into a car accident. Uh, you know, we had one, one member that developer got into a car accident. So it's developed, it's delayed her software product about a one and a half months. So hopefully nothing bad has happened. It usually doesn't, but you know, that could be a worst case scenario. Um, then you launch in month six with at least 10 paying customers. Wow. That's exciting. And I'm going to link all this up in the show notes. So the listeners can just go there and, and watch the video and go to the website and, and learn even more about this, which is just truly inspirational stuff. Dane, what is your vision for the future? Serendipity is surrounding the foundation in every way. Um, this is not, this is not like just a casual endeavor for us. The foundation is a world-class program. We are reinventing education. Um, and we are reinventing education in that we are focusing on the belief structures and the mindsets and reversing them indefinitely so people can find abundance and joy in their life. Um, and, and education doesn't do that. Uh, they address the surface-level issues. They don't dig deep into the core and really change the heart of who someone is. And we do this from a very loving place. So I want to build... We want to build um, the uh, the largest group of self-aware, loving entrepreneurs on the planet that uh, are like kind of warriors. Not that in like we can do it. We'll charge through walls. We would if we have to, but more like warriors of ourselves, of understanding ourselves, of our limiting beliefs, so that we can all reverse them together and become a more empowered community because you know we believe power is in community and together and alone we are weak and together we are unstoppable so it is just to build the most uh the most remarkable group of loving entrepreneurs on the planet and uh you know it's to create as many possible software companies as 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 possible um you know i want to have we well i keep saying i because my limiting belief for the longest time has been that i need to do things by myself and I've just since reversed this belief to know I'm going to focus on what I'm amazing at, which is teaching, and build a team around me that can do the other remarkable things. So if you hear me saying I instead of we, it's because I'm just shifting into this new belief that I've just recently reversed in myself. Um, so anyway, we believe really in building this list of entrepreneurs all around the world. Uh, and, and we want to have a list that's so big. That if, if I'm traveling and I'm in Florida, we can blast out everyone in Florida and be like, hey, I'm coming to Florida, uh, Tallahassee for the week. Is anybody living here? Let's kick it and have a beer. So like my entire goal for the list is, is, is to have friends all around the world so wherever I travel, I can be in good entrepreneurial company so I, I'm not alone. Um, and this will be for anybody who's a team member in the foundation. We also have – I also have this vision of this home that I will build 
uh, for myself, that's like anywhere between a five and ten million dollar home. And I'll bring in, uh, be bringing in like feng shui experts to, to, to calibrate the energy of every room. And I want it to be one of the most loving homes on the planet. So people can come from all around the world to come visit and, and, and live in this place and experience it for a while and just be transformed by the, the loving energy of this home. Um, and the reason I, I focus so much on love is that um, the, the fear center of your brain is actually shut off when love is present. And uh, a lot of people teach with fear, like you got to do this. You know, we will kick you out, but we. I guess that is a little bit of fear, but, but that works really well for us. There, like otherwise, we find people slipping. But for the most part, like it's all very loving, uh, because when you do love, the fear of center of the brain shuts off. I'm repeating myself here, but for example, uh, if someone is in love, you see them doing like crazy, stupid stuff. It's because all fearful thought in the brain is completely shut off because that love is present. So even if people are super afraid, when they get into the presence of a very loving energy field, which we find that is present in the foundation, uh, they're able to move forward. So it's kind of an all-encompassing thing, John. It's, the, it's a really large list of entrepreneurs all around the world we can tap into wherever we're traveling. It's this amazing home that people can come into and be transformed by, and it's to have as many possible new software companies and new entrepreneurs created as possible. Powerful, powerful stuff. I cannot wait to join you at that home at some point in the future. That's going to be a great place. So, Dane, we're approaching the end of the interview at this point, and this is where we launch into the lightning round, where I just ask you five questions. Just take 20 to 30 seconds to answer each one of these questions for our audience. Okay. The first question is, what was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? It was thinking that I needed all these things in place to actually sell to a customer, like a, a legal entity, a, a domain name, a, a product name, a, a brand, an attorney that's like got my co corporation all set up, and business cards, and, and, and everything that a customer doesn't care about. Um, it's the most freeing thing in the world when all you do is focus on what's important to the customer. The customer does not care if you have a website, domain, or logo. They just care if their end result can get solved. And so once I made that my focus, is just I can solve your end result. Uh, we launched Paperless Pipeline, and it was doing a few thousand dollars a month before we even ever registered the real domain name or created the product name or created the logo or anything. Because customers didn't care about that. They just wanted to manage their transactions. So that's what we focused on. It wasn't an entity of any kind. Um, so it's really just focusing on what's important to the customer. And I can, I can explain this. I know it's longer than 30 seconds and I know you can logically hear it, but to internally really experience how little you need to do to actually start a company, you'll find that it's much easier to start a company than it is to go out and fill, a, fill out a job application. Filling out a job application and applying for a job is actually more work than starting a company when you start a company correctly by focusing on the customer. Ah, oh, I love that. What's the best business advice you ever received? Find the pain. Awesome. What is something that's working for you right now? Um, following my true purpose. It took me, I'm 29, it took me 29 years to find it. And my true purpose is, is being a teacher. And I want to be one of the best teachers in the world. And I made that declaration about a month and a half ago. Because uh, I found out about it about a month and a half ago. And... Um, what's working for me is making that realization and then hiring a team of people that can do everything else around me so that I can just focus on teaching. And it's nice that I have the money in place so that I can pay them. But the interesting thing is that many of them don't want to be paid. They just want to be around me so they can, have, so they can experience my energy. They, this is what they tell me. And, and, and learn from me so that they can maybe go off and do their own thing one day. Um, so it's really been to recognize what my unique ability is, what my special talent is. And I wasn't able to find it until I was taking action. I didn't just sit around and realize, oh, I'm a teacher. It was actually by trying to teach and actually by starting these different software businesses that like, I was able to find it. So what's working for us right now at the foundation is we're building this amazing team. And I find that the quality of employees that I find, the quality of partners, are, are, are directly related to the, to the quality of our vision. And our vision is to empower, uh, empower people with empowering beliefs so they can find abundance and joy in their life. And, you know, they just so happen to build software companies. So I'm um, being very clear on a really deep driven mission that, uh, and being focused on being a teacher so that 
uh, others can can fill in the gaps where where I don't want to be is is working oh so incredibly well that I have to pinch myself sometimes. Love that vision. Do you have a book that you'd recommend to Fire Nation? It'd be a different book if they were starting their companies. If you were an entrepreneur and you're building a company, I would say The Ultimate Sales Machine by Chet Holmes is a must-have book. Um, If you're looking to break out of your company, hmm, well, there's the book, The $100 Startup. I've never read it, but that comes to mind. Um, you know, I know Chris Gillibo is a, is a great writer, so I'm sure the book is quality, but I haven't personally read it, but that book came to mind. So I wanted to mention it, but really, I don't think this is, this is really about books for people that want to get out of nine to five. This is really about the experience of doing idea extraction, get off your butt. The next business that you walk into and do a transaction with, ask them right there, right face to face. Hey, tell me, I was curious about your business. What's the most important activity in your business right now? Just, just try and ask it however awkward it feels. Just do it. Start finding the pain all over the place. Absolutely. And this is the last question, Dane, and it's my favorite. It's kind of a tricky one, so you can take a couple seconds to digest it. If you woke up tomorrow morning and you still had all the experience and knowledge you currently have right now, but everything that you've ever created had completely disappeared, leaving you with essentially a clean slate, which many of our listeners find themselves in right now, what would you do in the next seven days? I've often said that um, you could burn everything that I have to the ground and I would just recreate it tomorrow Um, because the external businesses that I own are a reflection of my internalized belief structures and mindset. They have nothing to do with the actual things that exist. So the manifestations of whatever they look like in the real world are all created because of my internal reality of how I perceive the world. So I have no fear at all about any of my businesses failing. I'm not attached to any of them succeeding because I know they will succeed. That's kind of weird, um, but it's true. And so, no, you know, I am attached to them succeeding. Like if they don't succeed, I'm bummed. But like I'm not this. I'm not afraid of like, oh crap, everything is going to. If everything tanks, what's going to happen? Um, that's just not a, a question. So the next seven days. Would be such. I would be so excited. Like it would be the greatest seven days ever because <laughs> it would be so much fun. Like I don't know what I would do. I would, you know, I would probably. Uh, okay, I'll get really specific for a second. Great. Um, I would target a, a company, a big software company that has uh, an API, like Dropbox or FreshBooks, uh, or what's some other big software companies that APIs? Thirty Seven Signals, Basecamp. Do you have any coming to mind? No, I think Thirty Seven Signals is a great one. SEO Moz, another one that we interviewed yesterday. Oh man, SEO Moz. Is that Rand Fishkin? Yeah, we had Rand Fishkin on the show. Oh man, that guy is nuts. <laughs> He's insane. Can I say F words on this? Um, I'd like to limit them. Okay, yeah, I will only say that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually drop the F-bomb, but man, that guy totally deserves it. He's just nuts. Um, You know, let's pick uh, Dropbox. I think Dropbox might be the biggest. Um, I would go into the Dropbox community, and I would start talking to users, and I would find their pain about what they're using Dropbox for um, that Dropbox wasn't necessarily designed for. So they're kind of like hacking Dropbox together to solve a problem that, that they're like really ch- trying to solve, but they, this doesn't really exist yet. And I would find, and I would keep doing, uh, find the pain uh, conversations with people that are all using Dropbox until I kind of came to this universal conclusion that 30% of the people I talk to or 10% of the people I talk to, anywhere between 10 and 30 is fine. All are like, you know, especially people in Dropbox in the real estate space or in the attorney space or however they're using it, like, you know, maybe they have a, a, a system where files go into a folder and then they get moved to the review folder once they're removed, but once they're reviewed, but sometimes the review screws up or whatever. So then I would say, I've got this problem, I've got this pain. Um, okay, great. Now I'm going to build an API on top of Dropbox. It's a simple file reviewing workflow structure. So people can mark off files and then move them over to reviewed without like screwing up the file hierarchy and emailing notifications if, if files aren't reviewed or whatever. Uh, I'm just making this up, but like this is what I would do. And there are a number of uh, very significant advantages that are built into this kind of process 
Uh, notice how this is all just an internal mindset thing. And if this didn't work out, you know, I might try something different. Uh, maybe I might tar target the DJ market, disc jockeys. I'm sure that they've got some some pain. You know, at the foundation, we believe that there's an unmet pain or an unmet need in every market. You just have to dig long enough to find the pain. So anyway, we got this Dropbox thing. There's a number of significant advantages. One, there's already built-in paying users, so you know that they're willing to pay money. Two, you have a built-in customer base, which is great. Three, you have an existing software platform that you can build on top of, so you can rapidly build a software product on top of that with the API very quickly. Uh, four, if you have no idea what you're doing with software, it's it's even better. Uh, you're even more well off because the foundation's already in place by Dropbox, uh, so you can just post on Odesk and say, "Hey, I want to build this thing on Dropbox that does file reviewing. Send out, um, and and you're going to get developers that that write back." Now, I said at the beginning of the interview, you kind of you want to do your copywriting, fast payment, um, guaranteed work, work that matters. You know, you can kind of put that in the title, but just um, just say, you know, I want to do this with Dropbox. You'll get enough replies back. They'll start quoting you on prices. You go back. I go back to the customers I talked to. I said, this is what's going to cost me to develop. I'd love for you to fund this in advance. In exchange, I want to give you the product free for life. Um, and then in the, in, in within those seven days, I would like to have the development started on that product, money funded in the account. Um, and, and, and building on that API and then expanding on that. Um, it's not just for Dropbox API, you know, eventually we'll break off. So we're like the official file reviewing system for attorneys in this case, if I happen to target attorneys using Dropbox, that, that's, that's probably one thing I would do. Wow. That, I just love listening to the wheels turn in your mind. It's really, really an awesome thing to hear. So thank you for sharing that. And and thank you for joining us today, Dane. This is the, the end of the interview. You've given us some great actionable advice, and we are all better for it. Why don't you just give Fire Nation one last piece of advice, give yourself a plug, and then we'll say goodbye. What do you think is the most impactful thing you've heard on the interview so far, John? I think the most impactful thing is fail faster. I really am a, a believer in that, but to hear how you put it, I just know how true it is, and I just am excited to go do that. Yeah. And, and you know, when you have everything on the line, like if your, if your whole life is on the line, like if this business idea doesn't work out, then you can't leave your company. It is so hard to not be afraid of failing. Um, the, the thing with the, the thing about the foundation is you're in that community of support. So you, it's, it's okay. It's, it's, it's more okay to fail there. You feel safer to fail. Um, but what I would say to you, you know, if this Dropbox idea, this is my piece of advice, if the Dropbox idea did not work out, um, I would try and sell it to customers. If they said no and they didn't want to buy it, then that idea has failed. I tank it. I move on to the next one, but I've done so in like two or three days. So that's what I mean by fail faster is like try and sell your idea, try and get money for it. And if you can't get money for it, uh, there could be an issue with your salesmanship, uh, which Spin Selling is actually a really great book. Spin Selling. The guy diagnosed 30,000 of the greatest sales calls ever done and put them into a modeled a model formula for selling the sorry selling the crap out of everything, um, and spin selling is, is a great book. But uh, that's what I mean by fail faster. So like if that Dropbox idea didn't work, you know I'd say oh cool you know thank you. I wouldn't lose that guy as a customer because they still have that painful problem. I would just maybe try and do something different. So you know you marry the problem, don't marry the solution. So many people get stuck in marrying their solution. It has to be the solution. It has to be this product. And if, and if anybody doesn't wants anything different, you're not going to pivot. Stop that. That causes so much pain and frustration and failure. That causes gray hair and, and, and wrinkles in your face. Marry the problem. Um, sell your product. Fail fast. And then, you know, if you want to see this done in real time, if you want to see case studies of people doing this, so you can have more confidence and move forward and do it in your life, definitely check out the foundation.io that's t h e foundation uh, dot io and you can request a case study of how a 22 year old kid from New Zealand built a six figure software business from thin air uh, he was working at a cell phone company he had 5 grand in the bank when he joined the foundation and now like even less than a year later he's got over 70k and he's well on his way um, and you know he really started with nothing he's actually you know his, his business is in his garage and he is a living testament to um, how much potential you have that you don't even know about. We're going to link all this up in the show notes. So again, thank you so much, Dane, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Yep. See you, man. Thank you. Hey, guys. This is John Lee Dumas signing off. Remember to subscribe to our email list for your chance to win $50 cash every Wednesday. Fire Nation, my one call to action to you today is this. If you enjoyed this free podcast and want to show your love, 
head over to eofire.com, click the subscribe and iTunes button at the top of our page, and you'll be shot over to iTunes to leave a rating and review. To show my appreciation for your hopefully five-star rating, I will give you a shout out at the top of an upcoming show, and then you can tweet about how awesome you are. Seriously though, it would really mean a lot to all of us here at Fire Nation that work so hard to bring you this content five days a week. Until next time, Fire Nation, prepare to ignite. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.